Final four picks. We'll start off with Villanova and Kansas. Of course, Villanova dealing with the loss of Justin Moore, uh, the second leading scorer on the team. And if you go over to EvanMaya.com, uh, he is an integral part of like their top four lineups. I mean, he plays the second most minutes on the team behind Colin Gillespie. Uh, they only played, I think, seven players in the Elite Eight game. And I, I don't know what they're going to... I mean, they got a short rotation anyway. I... I like to believe that Jay Wright is a good enough coach to be able to figure this out. I mean, they got five stars sitting on their bench, but trying to bring them in in a Final Four game, kind of difficult to do. Uh, Kansas is a completely different team since they got into the tournament. I mean, they are just ridiculous. Remy Martin did nothing all season, and now he's playing basically like an all-star. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like, adding him, because their, their point guard play was suspect. And now you got, you know, all-star level play from from Remy Martin, and Kansas is a pretty damn good basketball team. I mean, they were already pretty good. Like, this is a this is a national championship quality team. Uh, they're favored by four and a half over Villanova right now. The total is 133. Uh, do you have a play on this one? Um, I, I really want to take Nova and just hope for the best. But I think Kansas is going to win. I think Kansas will cover. That's, I, that's kind of the way that I'm leaning. The year-long numbers would have uh, Villanova favored by about half a point if you go by the the year-long. But that includes having Justin Moore. Uh, if you go based on like the last six weeks, that would have Villanova favored by about a point. But again, that's with Justin Moore. I don't know how you overcome that loss. Uh, if they do, I'm going to enjoy it. But yeah. You know, I I don't see how they do that. I think Kansas is, I mean, playing their best basketball of the season right now. So I I'll go with you. I will take Kansas. Uh, I'm gonna go under the 133 because I think the Kansas defense has been pretty good, and I don't know how you replace that scoring that that Moore brought. Well, Nova scoring is definitely gonna go down. Um, I wonder. This is the reason I like Kansas. That there's a world where for Kansas score a lot, which is why I think they can win. They will cover. I mean, these are like Kansas, uh, Villanova, really, really slow pace. And teams that play slower, they have a better chance of slowing down the other team as opposed to the other team trying to speed them up, right? You got a veteran Mr. point guard in Colin Gillespie with Villanova. Like, I, I would I would wager that this thing goes under the 133 uh, just because I don't expect Villanova to be able to score enough points to, to get it past that. Uh, remember that Villanova scored 50 points. And that was with Justin Moore in uh, for all of the game until the last minute against Houston. Uh, Kansas is not Houston. Don't get me wrong, but also like they'll they'll slow it down. Like they they'll slow it down with you. And I I think they've got better players and whatnot. I think they win. I think they cover. And I think this thing goes under one thirty three. So uh, that'll move us over to North Carolina and Duke. Duke is a four point favorite. Total is one fifty one. Now we just saw these guys play. Uh, about a month ago or so at the last Coach K game in Cameron Indoor, and North Carolina kind of whipped them. What was it, like 94, 83, something like that? I mean, it was... Well, and that was with Duke having a 15-point lead at halftime. Yeah. So I mean, think was, about the outscoring in the second half. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they whipped them, and, and they had to come back from, from double digits down. If you look, since that game, you remember me telling you about North Carolina uh, being, you know, really awesome, whatever. Uh, since they lost to Pitt, going all the way through the NCAA tournament, etc., uh, just in the NCAA tournament, North Carolina has been the most efficient team in the tournament. That's uh, that's offense and defense. And, I, dude, the year-long numbers on this would have Duke favored by three. You look over the last six weeks, North Carolina would be favored by two. I... Yes, I understand all the hoopla around K and whatnot. This number just feels really inflated to me. Like I, I'm going to ride well, with North what, Carolina. What was, the, what was the number one more time? Uh, for it's the number's four. Uh, Duke is favored by four. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of where I thought it should be. That's where I thought it would be. I guess I don't think it should be. I I, but I think it's inflated. Like there's eighty something percent of the bets coming in on Duke right now. Uh, yeah. Like I, I'm going to I'm going to take North Carolina plus the four. Like, yeah, no, I am too. Some of this is out. This is what I want to happen badly, but also I'm with you, man. I think this North Carolina team is really, really good. They play 
my problem with Duke is, and I know it's an easy pop shot and it's an easy cheap shot because I don't like them, and, and a lot of people don't like them. It, it, it's they play selfish basketball, and I don't think it's fun to watch. Like yeah. I watching ISO basketball is incredibly frustrating. Well, I mean, You're it's talking NBA. about a like, yeah, it, well, but it's not. That. Hang on, now there are some teams in the NBA. Those old school Spurs teams that we grew up watching. I don't know why people hated them. But Jesus, man, they have like 13, 14 passes before they make a you know make a move to the basket. Oh, yeah. Like like the ball never hit the ground. They didn't dribble at all. Like like they're running plays. They're setting people up. They're moving you one way to get somebody else to move another, so they can move a third piece right where they want it and get an easy basket. How about and, this? It's and, it's and, most of modern NBA. I'll I'll say that. How's... Oh, you're, you're probably right. But God, it's so frustrating. Even in the NBA, they run a basic pick and roll, you know, <laughs> like, like all Duke is going to do on offense is, is ISO, 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 ISO. That's it. That's the list. And they're really good. They got NBA guys and they're going to score. I just, North Carolina plays this team together. I, I'd rather see that go forward. Take the jerseys off of them. Take the uniforms off of them. Take the, I like this school better than that school. I like the way North Carolina plays basketball. I find it more visually appealing and enjoyable to watch. I want the Tar Heels to win. I like getting four points because I I, I am with you. I, I thought this number was going to be around four or five. Um, and, and I thought, you know, it should be close to a pick em. I do think these teams are pretty even. And I'm assuming the 80% is not just the K hoopla, but it's also uh, the, you know, we like the team that, that lost the first match in the rematch. And I'm going to bet the numbers show that the team that lost in the rematch, uh, you know, usually do well in the rematch. Or in the first match, you usually do well in the rematch. I, I would um, imagine so. But, yeah. But, I but I'm going to I'm going to stick I'm going to stick with with Hibbert and the boys, and uh, and and if he can if he can end Coach K's career in Cameron with a loss, and then end Coach K's career forever in a Final Four game. Oh. Those could be the two biggest in the history of these two teams playing basketball against one another. Those could be the two biggest losses or the two biggest wins in North Carolina school history. And Roy so. Hibbert in his first year could have them. That's a, yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Hubert like, Davis, that's an, like that's an incredible uh, Hubert, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, Roy, that, that's a, that's <laughs> an incredible, incredible idea that in his in his first year. He could he could have the two biggest wins in North Carolina history. I yeah, I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree with you. Uh, I do. I, I will tell you this: I do like the over in this game. Uh, my points per possession formula yeah uh, has this at one fifty one point six four, so going about half a point over the total. And uh, my average points per game formula that I use puts it at one fifty four point nine, so that's three points over. Uh, this total, well, and, and 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 this and this game has because we think it's going to be tight. There's a world where you get an extra quarter, and yep. and if you get the extra quarter, you're you're definitely going over. And yeah, and I, I, so. I I like when I think it's a coin flip. If I have to pick a total, which I'm not picking a total on anything, but if I had to pick a total and I think the game is a coin flip, I think the number is right there. I'll take the over. Hey, it's more fun to root for points, than not root for points, but also. Uh, if I think the game's going to be really close, if you get OT, you've blown the number out the water. Like, you, you should be easy money there. Yeah. No, I, I don't think you're wrong. I don't think you're wrong. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.